The wait is over. We finally get to see what the New Orleans Saints offense really looks like. We got all of that and a little bit of land yet for you on today's episode of Locked on Saints. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Huda Nation and Huda family? I am your host, your friend, Ross Jackson, New Orleans native, your New Orleans Saints expert and credentialed member of the media covering those New Orleans Saints as a Saints beat writer over at LouisianaSports.net and Saints analyst over at WWL TV. On today's episode, our little bit of a pregame episode here, five things that you need to know heading into the New Orleans Saints hosting the Carolina Panthers. We're going to take a look at why this game isn't a must win, but it is most certainly a mustn't lose. We'll dive into Trevor Penning's big opportunity to reintroduce himself to the NFL, to Saints fans, and to an extent, the New Orleans Saints themselves. And we're going to kick everything off with the fact that the new New Orleans Saints offense is finally ready to open up. We appreciate you very much for being here with us and for making us your first listen and for being an everyday or here on the show, which is a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, and is brought to you today by our friends at Prize Picks. Head over to prizepicks.com slash locked NFL and use the promo code locked on NFL as well in all lowercase to get a $50 boost when you play $5. The New Orleans Saints finally get to unveil their offense. And from what I have been told, the New Orleans Saints offense that we saw during the preseason is minuscule, minuscule in terms of what they showed versus what they have in the chamber ready to go as this offense kicks off. Now, I will say this. Everything that the New Orleans Saints have, they have, right? It's not going to be a lot of adding new things and generating new things. It might change the names of some stuff and all those other pieces. But for the most part, what the New Orleans Saints have, they now have. So what we see week one should be a pretty good representation, at least in terms of what will foundationally be their identity throughout the 2024 NFL season. Some things will probably be kept close to the vest so that you have your punches and counter punches. Some things will probably be saved for later on in the year, all of that. But this should be a far venture from what we saw from the New Orleans Saints offense in the preseason, which again, still produced better numbers, better percentages in terms of motion, play action, outside zone runs, uh, attacking the middle of, of the field, attacking the area of the field 10 to 19 yards away from the line of scrimmage. We saw all of the numbers in terms of those categories in the 2024 preseason be better than what was shown in the 2023 regular season. So we already saw a little bit of improvement. The big question is, what happens when you're not playing against the second, third teams? What happens when you're not playing your second and third teams to balance that sort of expectation as well? And so being able to see your starters execute your offense in front of their starters is going to be something that the New Orleans Saints offense has been itching, scratching, waiting to be able to put on a platter and serve up to New Orleans Saints fans and serve up to the NFL. Now we have to see where things go next. But the good news is that we should see, regardless of the results of the game, which in my opinion needs to be a win in this one, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, but the results of this game, regardless of those, do you get to see a more efficient offense? Do you see more motion, more play action? Does the outside zone run game work? Are you able to effectively predicate your offense with your run game, i.e. building off of what you're doing in the run game? Does your disguising work on that side, running the same plays out of different formations, running many different look plays out of the same looks, all of these little things that you do to be able to create some confusion for an opposing defense? If all of that is spot on, or at least looks like it's trending in the right direction, right? There'll probably be some bumps in the road along the way when it comes to their first opportunity to go out there and really put this offense on display with new offensive coordinator, Clint Kubiak. But if they show positive strides there, the result of the game eh, doesn't, I don't want to say it doesn't matter because I feel like it does matter. Like I feel like the New Orleans Saints need to win this game very much. But let me put it this way. If the Saints win this game, but those things don't look smooth, then there might still be some cause for concern 
some conversation around, you know, hey, is this going to work? Is it not going to work? How long is it going to take if they stumble out of the gate on the offensive side to kind of get everything corrected and all this other stuff? So it, that that's really the thing. It, it's like being able to see those boxes checked is just as important as what the win would be, right? Like that that's really a thing. You can win and not check those boxes and then the conversation will feel a little bit different, a little bit kind of hedged, if you will, a little bit critical um, in terms of like critiquing those things, even though it was a win, all that kind of stuff, like the response would be a little weird. And so you want to check all those boxes. And so the things that you're looking to see is greater implementation of motion and play action to great effect, right? And different variations of motion and play action as well, not just simply moving your tight end from one side of the line to the other side of the line. What about your orbit motions where your backs are running around the outside of your quarterback? What about the jet sweep motions that you can then take advantage of and utilize on the jet sweep or turn around and hand off on a play action to the jet sweep and then you go to the outside zone run or you fake both and then you end up having a free running receiver as they cross behind the line of scrimmage. All these other pieces that end up kind of expanding upon your typical use of what would be basic motion. Remember, motion and then motion at the snap are two different metrics. They're tracked two different ways. And they're done that, or that's done because they in, it effectively create different wrinkles and different challenges for a defense motion at the snap, meaning snapping the ball while a player is in motion, while standard motion would just simply be moving one player from one spot to the other, letting them get settled and then being able to do it, which does still have its own benefits before the snap, diagnosing whether a team's in zone or man based on who does or doesn't follow the player in motion, all these other things. So there's still benefits to it one way or another, but diversifying how much of the different types of motion that you're using helps to create more challenges of the eye discipline to your opposition. And I think that's the big thing that you're looking for. And then the different varieties of play action, not just straight drop back play actions, but rollouts, bootlegs, waggles, things like that, that just create a little bit more of a challenge uh, for the opposing defense. So you're looking for all of that to be accounted for. Uh, production in the outside zone run game. Can you average more than four yards running outside of the tackles? And then how does that end up stretching the defense a little bit more horizontally, uh, horizontally, excuse me, laterally, so that it opens up voids for you to be able to attack in the passing game and opens up greater opportunities for you to be able to utilize your play action game. When you are attacking the team in the passing game, what areas of the field are you targeting? Are you married to the sidelines and the perimeter, or can you carve up the middle of the field. That used to be the bread and butter of the New Orleans Saints. And then the last thing on top of all that too, just in terms of offensive production, we haven't even gotten to the offensive line yet because we'll discuss that in a little bit of a different way here in a moment. But the other thing that you're looking for is the receivers and their mentality with the ball in their hands. Is it catch and go down or is it catch and fight for extra yards? I keep hearkening back to the Thursday night game between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Baltimore Ravens, which kicked off the season. But one of the big differences in that matchup was the mentality of the receivers with the ball in their hands. You saw every single Chiefs receiver turn up and try to get more yards, fight for more yards, all that. Didn't see the same thing coming from the Baltimore Ravens, although it was two very different passing games between those two. I think we can be honest about that. Uh, but I would like to see from the New Orleans Saints receivers a mentality that is, got it, now go get more yards. And so I think checking all of those boxes, massively important for the New Orleans Saints and opening up that playbook, like I said, talking with people, talking with players, talking with all that. It's the idea that like this playbook, in terms of what we saw in the preseason, nothing, right? Minuscule in terms of what they showed based upon what they're going to have at their disposal here in the 2024 season. And if that, it, if they end up showing all that and they're smooth with it and they're, they're, they're producing with it, they're in a situation to where they're, um, uh, feel like they're in rhythm with it, then I think a lot of the perception around the New Orleans Saints becomes a lot more positive up ahead of their greater challenges against the Dallas Cowboys, Philadelphia Eagles, Atlanta Falcons, and Kansas City Chiefs, where they really, really need to prove something. All right, coming up next, let's take a look at the offensive line. We skipped that because I want to come back to it because in particular here, Trevor Penning has a real opportunity to reintroduce himself. Can he get it done? We appreciate you being here, and we will have that coming up for you next as we continue on on today's episode of Locked on Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on Saints brought to you by friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. If you are a small business owner, LinkedIn Jobs is perfect for you when you're looking at hiring true professionals 
to add to your team. And in fact, with LinkedIn Jobs, you're going to be able to hire professionals that you won't find anywhere else, including those who aren't even actively searching for a job, but you might be able to offer them the perfect role. LinkedIn Jobs will help to serve that to them because they want to help you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster and for free. Over 70% of people that use LinkedIn don't even visit other leading job sites. 86% of small businesses end up getting a qualified candidate within 24 hours and already two and a half million small businesses are using LinkedIn jobs. So if you're not using LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place when it comes to building out your team. They even make it a little bit easier for you too, by giving you a tool that will help you write job descriptions for you, making the process even easier and faster. So post your job for free today at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. All right, family, it is an imperative, very important game coming up for New Orleans Saints offensive tackle, right tackle now, Trevor Penning, uh, as he gets an opportunity to reintroduce himself. His name is Trev. Can he get it done? Uh, That's what we're diving into here as we continue on with our five things that you need to know going into this New Orleans Saints and Carolina Panthers game. We appreciate you very much making us your first listen of the day every day for your second listen. Make sure you go and get caught up with Locked on NFL 10 episodes This week, giving you everything that you need to know heading into the NFL season, the madman Tyler Rowland and the barbershop with Tony Wiggins. Go check it out twice a day over at Locked On NFL, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So Trevor Penning, real opportunity, real opportunity here going up against the Carolina Panthers who are going to deploy a little bit more of a 3-4 pass rush situation, all that. That's kind of what he struggled with uh, the opener last year up against the Tennessee Titans. Pretty good litmus test here. Uh, look, are, are the Carolina Panthers pass rushers as talented as a Brian Burns was for them? No. Uh, but adding a crafty veteran like Jadavion Clowney, who would know exactly how to exploit the weaknesses of a young offensive line or of an offensive line that's learning a new system or of an offensive line that's frankly struggling. We don't know that that will be the Saints, but if they are struggling, Jadavion Clowney is going to know how to take advantage of that. As a veteran, he's seen it all. He's seen a lot of it. And so this is a real opportunity here for Trevor Penning. And really the first real opportunity for Trevor Penning. You know, we we harped on his preseason performances and where the development was and things like that. And as I've said before, there are folks who are saying that they've seen the progression. I still see the concerns, but I'm I'm the less educated eye. So I I will always yield to, all right, wait and see. You know what I mean? But this is it. Like this is the opportunity here for Trevor Penning to kind of reintroduce himself and be able to let people know that he deserves this starting role. Um, It's a little bit kind of concerning if you're the New Orleans Saints, who are very open, head coach Dennis Allen was, about the fact that he never felt like anybody really came forward and snatched that right tackle opportunity and said, this is my role uh, throughout training camp. He never really clearly stated that anybody ever actually convinced him of that. Now, we should ask that follow-up, but I do think that there is something there in terms of like, I mean, you're rolling with a guy by default in that case, like not the greatest sort of like vote of confidence in that situation. And so this becomes Trevor Penning's opportunity to take, regardless of what anybody else has to say about him and make his own statement. He's a talented player. He's uniquely gifted, uniquely athletic, especially at, at, at his size. There are not many guys his size that can do the things that he can do. Uh, uniquely athletic, which is very helpful for this New Orleans Saints uh, system, and an absolute freight train in the run game. The one place, which is uh, unfortunately very, very important, um, that he needs to show the growth, show the progress, show the development, uh, comes in pass protection, right? So we've always known about Trevor Penning from the very beginning, when he was drafted, when we were studying him, um, coming out of UNI, University of Northern Iowa, and all that. That was the big thing. Fantastic roadblock. Or fantastic. Sorry, they always called him a road grader. And so, like a fantastic run blocker is a road grader in that area, but needs development pretty raw in the run game and so or in the passing game. And so, has he made that progress? Has he made that um, uh, development? Right? Has has he achieved that development? Here, here you go. Here's the opportunity to do it. And I think along with Trevor Penning, because I don't, it, it's it's a little bit unfair to narrow. The conversation down to just him being someone that's got something to prove. Lucas Patrick is a new face. He's got things to prove as a new face. Um, 
you know, Eric McCoy and Cesar Ruiz, they have stuff to prove and confirm about their game. I don't think they have a lot to prove. I think they have stuff to confirm though, in terms of like, yes, they're the incumbent guys. They're the two sure things. They're going to go out there and play like sure things. Uh, and then Taliesi Fuanga has a lot to prove too, just as a rookie, right? Any rookie that's immediately starting on your team is going to have something to prove or something to confirm, right? That might be the better phrase for him too, because the Saints clearly feel that he deserved that starting left tackle role. And I would agree with that. I thought that his hand placement, his hand fighting, uh, his anchor, like all the things that he does, he does extremely well. And so I'm excited to see what he brings to the table too. But really that whole starting five on the offensive line, including health questions, right? In terms of just not that any of them have specifically garnered the injury, you know, uh, I, I mean, I guess some people would say that maybe about Trevor Penning being like injury prone or whatever, but it, you simply know that the NFL is a game of attrition. And so being able to walk in and walk out of a game with all five of your starting offensive linemen is always going to be a plus. It's always going to be a positive. So I think this is a real opportunity for Trevor Penning and a real opportunity for the New Orleans Saints and their offensive line to prove um, that the concerns maybe that were had about them over the course of the offseason were overblown. Here's their opportunity to do that. Um, number three, uh, I want to remind you of the players that were listed as out, no injury designation, all that, just to make sure you've got that. Uh, so the New Orleans Saints ruled four players out and two players are going in good to go, important players over on the defensive side and a few other players are questionable. But I think that with a couple of roster moves that were made today on Saturday that we might have gotten some some at least in potential indications of who is healthy and who should be ready to go. So the Saints had no injury designation on Friday, their final injury report, which included game designations for linebacker Pete Werner nor uh, cornerback Marshawn Lattimore. So both of them should be good to go in this game. Werner was managing a shoulder injury while Lattimore was managing a hip flexor injury. No designations. Um, Lattimore was elevated to full two days ago on Thursday. So things should be good there, which is great. Because remember, the Saints haven't had Marshawn Lattimore since week 10 of last season. If you go back to the season before that, the Saints never got Marshawn Lattimore, Paulson, Adebo, and Alante Taylor, or, or uh, Bradley Roby on the field for a single snap in 2022. I don't know if you remember that or not, but it was tough, like them dealing with those injuries. So um, seeing them have their starting corners out there, great. Really, really good stuff. Um, questionable for the game, linebacker Willie Gay, wide receiver A.T. Perry, as well as uh, offensive lineman Nick Saldaveri. Uh, Willie Gay Jr., who is dealing with a back injury, I don't know exactly the, the details of the back injury. They don't have to tell us that the way that they tell us that during training camp and stuff like that. So it might've just been back tightness or something like that. We're not really sure, but definitely something to watch for. Uh, if the Saints feel like they need to put him on a pitch count, they certainly can just based on the fact that like they can go out there and play a bunch of nickel and be just fine, right? By getting Alante Taylor out there, you still get good run support from him, all those things. And you get a good, another good, you know, blitzer out of the slot and everything with him as well. Uh, they could also go with, uh, uh, Kalik Hudson, who they're elevating from the practice squad, more on that in just a moment to help them out at Sam Linebacker, give Willie Gay some rest and some times there. Um, A.T. Perry dealing with a hand injury. My understanding is that hopefully he'll get at least get an opportunity before the game to test things out. We'll see where things go there. And then Nick Saldaveri, I think he's potentially going to be active for this game. He could be, could not be, but the Saints only have eight offensive linemen on their roster. And so the fact that they did not elevate an offensive lineman. They elevated instead linebacker Kalik Hudson and defensive tackle Kendall Vickers. Um, Sal DeVere might be good enough to go at least as like a third option as a backup, right? So it's like, ah, not good enough to really have him not, he's not, no, I don't want to say not good enough, but he's not healthy enough or whatever to not to be the top, you know, guy that goes in, but he could be the guy behind Landon Young, behind Oliudo to go in at that point. So maybe that's that's what the thinking might be there with them not elevating one of the many offensive line depth players that they have uh, on their on their practice squad. Uh, those that will be out this week, just in number order, defensive tackle Colin Saunders with an ankle injury, uh, linebacker DeMarco Jackson with a cap injury, linebacker Jalen Ford with a hamstring injury, two linebackers not able to play, hence Cleek Hudson being elevated. He should be able to help out with DeMarco Jackson's special teams role. And then finally, tight end Dallin Holker who's still managing his ankle injury. We'll see if he maybe is ready to go week two. All right, there's your updates on all that. Coming up next, big thing that I want to dive into, next week's or tomorrow's game isn't a must win, but it's definitely a mustn't lose. Let me tell you why as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints, put a Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.
Today's episode brought to you by the easiest and most fun way to play daily fantasy sports. It's our friends over at Prize Picks. Let me break it down for you. All right. This is how it goes. It's not you trying to pull together a lineup, going up against a bunch of mystery lineups, trying to win a slice of a very big pie of money and all that kind of stuff. It, it's not like that. It's you versus the house. All that you have to do is play against Prize Picks numbers. That's what you're looking at. So Prize Picks is going to give you stat projections for a bunch of players for every game. In the NFL, for instance, they got a lot more than the NFL, but we'll stick to the NFL here. You pick two to six players, choose whether or not you think that player is going to come in at more or less than the prize picks projection, and that's it. You get four players right, you can get up to a hundred times your entry back. And right now, they'll even give you what is effectively a free win towards that every week in September. One Caleb Williams passing yard for the Chicago Bears gets you one of those wins. So make sure you go check them out. It's a bunch of fun. I love prize picks. Download the prize picks app. And use the promo code locked on NFL so you can get $50 instantly when you play $5. That's the promo code locked on in all lowercase, excuse me, locked on NFL in all lowercase on the Prize Picks app to get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even have to win that play to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks run your game. Get it, Houdat Nation. The New Orleans Saints are not facing a must win against the Carolina Panthers, but they're certainly facing a mustn't lose. We appreciate you very much for being here. Remember, we'll be live from the floor of the Superdome uh, after the game tomorrow. So make sure you come through for that. I'll fin- wrap up the game, Dennis Allen's press conference, a couple of players, locker room, stuff like that. And then right after that, head out um, and then be streaming live from the Superdome floor. So make sure you come through for that. We'll talk what led to the victory, what led to the loss, whatever it is that happens, we'll break it all down. And then you'll still get a fresh episode Monday morning as well with a little bit of a deeper dive after I've had time to like rewatch the game, watch a little bit of tape in the morning, all that kind of stuff. So make sure you come through for that. All right. So um, look, I, I don't think of this game as a must win for the New Orleans Saints purely as a must win. I think what's more important is that they simply don't lose. That, that's really the thing for me. Because, because w- when I think of a must win, what I think of is a game that ends their season, right? Or that impacts their ability to be successful later in the season. And certainly that could be the case with this game. Like there could be a tiebreaker week 18 that all comes back to a loss uh, week one. But the that's about losing. Uh, the idea of winning doesn't do a ton in this one, right? It helps you because you get a win, you get a division win, that's helpful, but you can walk out of this game with a win and then still struggle against the Dallas, against Philly, against Kansas City, all those other things. So for me, this game is a little bit, believe it or not, less about winning, right? Which of course is important and every team wants to win and everything like that. But for me, like the thing that's most important about this game is don't lose. <laughs> Simply don't lose. Uh, the Saints... We can have all the conversations about the things that they did not do well in 2023, but there's, there's, there's something that they did very well in 2023, and they beat teams that were worse than them. And presumably, presumably, based on the roster, the Saints seem to be the more talented roster, right? They seem to be the quote-unquote better team based on their roster. Now, we're doing some hashtag on paper analysis when we talk about this, but it's, it's where we are, right? So uh, what they did last year very well is that they beat the teams that were worse than them. The Saints should go into this game the better team and therefore should be able to beat the team that is worse than them in the Carolina Panthers in this situation. Now, any given Sunday, any team can win any time. And even if the Saints lose this game, they can still turn around and beat Dallas and surprise and beat Philly. Who freaking knows? Nobody does. And so that's why I say it's less a must win. It's more of a just like, dude, you can't lose. Like, do not lose because the noise is going to be so loud if they do lose. You lose the division. Uh, advantage at that point a little bit early, right? You give up ground in the division advantage. Let me say it that way. Um, And you stumble coming out of the gate, which is never great, right? You want to get off to a fast start. Now, as we've seen in the past, fast starts don't always, don't always equate with, you know, steady momentum throughout a season and things like that. Saints over the course of the past couple of years have been off to faster starts and in the season, well, strong, but it's been the middle of the season where they've coughed it up a little bit, right? So those are the things that you're looking to see them try to avoid here in 2024. And so winning this first game becomes important, even though it doesn't tell the whole story. 
not losing this first game becomes very important because it doesn't Im- because it 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 emphasizes the what could be good about this team moving forward. So I think you're trying to show something here by simply not losing. Uh, the other thing that I think you you is the reason why I look at this game as like a mustn't lose versus a must win it, is that the confidence building of it all, right? Like the team, you want the confidence from this team, right? We saw how you know things. You know, players yelling at each other on the field and players and, and 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 coaches going back and forth on the sideline and stuff like that throughout last year. That's all stuff that ends up boiling over when you're losing games and when you're playing a, a brand of football that isn't winning football or isn't churning in the results, the production, whatever it might be. So building the confidence in yourself in terms of being able to go out there as a team and execute, um, have a new offense and show up with it immediately, have your defense take steps forward on top of what is already a very good and very talented defense. All that stuff helps. All that stuff benefits the team. So I think that that's another reason why I look at this one as a mustn't lose for New Orleans. Uh, lastly, last thing that I want you to know going into this game and, and, and become something that you'll be able to kind of follow along and watch is our number five here, uh, which is that the Saints rushing offense and run defense are set to be put to the test in this one. Now, the rushing Defense is put to the test because the New Orleans Saints got to a point last season. At the end of the year, they gave up over 100 rushing yards to each of the last two opponents. It did not end in you know wins for the last for those those last two opponents. The Saints' passing defense was able to keep points off the board, which is great. Uh, but you want to do things like get the ball back to your offense in this situation, get them more reps, allow them to get into rhythm and all those things, and so forcing those three and outs, winning on first and second down, forcing the third and longs, all those things for your pass rush ends up being put in a solid position to be able to try to make plays on a second and 10 pass or a third and 12 pass or whatever. Um, I think that that's where like you're trying to get a lot of value from your run defense in this game. It, it, it's less about, you know, can you keep them from running the ball and thereby win the game and more about can you keep them from running the ball and thereby set up all of these other areas of your team, of your defense, and potentially getting the ball back to the offense to allow both sides of the football to be able to kind of do what it is that they do best or show what it is that they need to show. So I think that that's going to happen there. Uh, What we also know is that the general trend with running backs in the NFL is that when they're in their last year of their contract, teams run them into the ground and then eventually move on from them. Now, the team does not have the Carolina Panthers, their rookie running back, but they will when he returns from his his season-ending injury next season. So right now they have Chuba Hubbard, who's in the last year of his rookie deal. And then you've got Miles Sanders, who's in the last year of his deal. And the Carolina Panthers are going to run them into the ground. And this will be their freshest game of the season before they're bumped and bruised and all those other things that unfortunately happen to running backs who have to run the ball in the most sort of congested areas of the field, right? And they have to play sort of that style of the game. Uh, So I think that Carolina and Dave Canales as their new head coach, like they're going to want to run the ball. They're going to want to predicate their offense with their run game. And so this is going to be a test for the New Orleans Saints defensive line, but their new front seven and really their run defense as a whole, because really their front seven is going to play a big role in that. The additions of Chase Young, Willie Gay Jr., um, interior defensive lineman like Christian Boyd in the draft, as well as John Ridgeway, the third out of, um, uh, or via trade from 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 Washington. All, all of that ends up kind of helping you maybe boost that unit a bit. And now they get the opportunity to go out there and prove something. The Saints' offensive run game is going to be put to the test because this is their first opportunity to show what it all looks like. And so that, I think, ends up being the big thing. So how do you get Alvin Kamara involved in the run game? How do you get, you know, Jonathan, uh, excuse me, um, uh, Jamal Williams and uh, Jordan Mims involved in the run game? How do you get Taysom Hill involved in the run game? Can you get the receivers involved in the run game? All of those things are all going to be things that, like, the Saints who want to predicate their offense off the run game will need to be able to provide. But I think we're getting in for a a nice Taysom Hill game here in this situation. All right, y'all, that's our five things for you to know going into this game. Remember, we'll be live after the game, right after like locker room, post-game press conferences, all that stuff tomorrow. So make sure you come through for the live episode or catch it later uh, as well. We appreciate you very much. As always, making us your first listen of the day every day. LSU is playing at the time that I'm recording this. So enjoy the rest of the LSU game. If you're at the Superdome and you see me, please say hi. And of course, go and check out Locked on Pelicans, Locked on LSU for your next listens. We appreciate you very much. As always, make it Locked on Saints a part of your day, part of your routine for saying yes to me on the show. 
As always, if you see me, please say hi. If you need anything else around your New Orleans Saints in between these episodes, make sure you follow me on your favorite social media at Ross Jackson Nola N O L A. Hit me up. Let me know how the family's doing them. How you living? Let me know how your mom and them. And trust you, that nation. I'll holla at you.